Hi, and welcome to BizQuick. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And on today's episode, we have a special treat for you. We traveled to the North Pole and got to audit Santa's workshop. So we're going to talk all about that today. That's right. You're listening to BizQuick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. BizQuick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real-world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Santa initially called us because he was seeing an overall decline in his business and his goal was really just to increase his business. So Corey and I made that trip to the North Pole to kind of assess what was going on. Our goal for um, Santa's business was to actually perform a business audit and improve his overall operations. And unfortunately, Santa was not able to join us on the podcast. This is a, his busiest time of the year. So we just wanted to give you a, a quick overview of what we learned while we were up there at Santa's workshop um, about his business, just in general, this time of the year and throughout the, you know, the, the rest of the year. Yeah. And, you know, before we dive into the problems that we found and, and the ways that the recommendations that we made to Santa, we do want to let everybody know Santa was a super gracious host. He gave us hot cocoa with marshmallows and a tour of the toy factory. And we got to meet the elves and the reindeer. So it was pretty awesome overall to go visit Santa. And I got to ride one of the reindeer. So that was fun. I got to, I got to drive the sleigh. <laughs> so that was amazing. Yeah. That was amazing. All right. So his initial problem is the one that we looked at first, right, was that he was just seeing this decline in business and he didn't understand why. So do you want to talk through like the first thing that we found? Um, Yeah, well, so we like, I guess if we want to go through the business audit first. So we started off just looking at um, just his sales and marketing structure, like how how does how does Santa make money? How does he keep that operation going? You know, where his revenue streams, um, you know, what he's doing to uh, just keep his business going in general, because the, the Christmas side of his business is cherry, the, the, the giving away the toys. He, he's got to make money though throughout the year. Um, so we looked into that and then, you know, we looked at the, um, different areas in terms of like finance where he was, um, you know, making money, losing money, got into just his operations and logistics, uh, talked about the people. So his employees, his vendors, people who he's outsourced, such as us, um, and then even into his animals, because, um, you know, these sentient beings that are his reindeer, um, they're on the payroll. So we got to figure out, um, you know, how that plays into everything. Yeah, we did a real thorough review of everything that Santa does and then started to identify where there were some opportunities for improvement. So we were looking at his processes and looking at his people and paying special attention to different opportunities for revenue streams and looking at his customer service. One of the biggest problems facing Santa right now has been the internet and specifically Amazon. So that's one of the areas that he was most concerned about because people are relying more and more on Amazon than they are on him because they can get products faster, quicker, and, you know, just on demand, you know, Santa only delivers once a year. So if you need that, if you need whatever that is, and within, you know, 24 hours, you can't get it from Santa. Yeah, that's been a real issue for him and trying to figure out, you know, how to um, slow down the bleed from the amount of business that Amazon is taking away from him has been a challenge and one that probably a lot of small business owners are familiar with. And Santa might have a pretty big um footprint in terms of how many people he serves, he's actually a small business because he has less than 100 employees. So he's a small business, just like everyone who's listening to this podcast is. And if you're wondering how Santa makes money throughout the year to keep that operation going, um, a couple of the areas that uh, he makes his money is, first of all, royalties. So every Santa hat you see out there, every reindeer, every elf, um, I mean, he's even got the Keebler elves on his payroll. Um, so that, that, that's all a part of his business there. And then it's, it's the royalties and the merchandising. So throughout the year, I mean, the elves are working throughout the year to make toys for all the kids, 
but I mean, they have a lot of downtime. So they're out there, they're making toys and they're, they're selling them. They're, you know, they're working with Sony, they're working with Lego, they're, you know, they're getting outsourced to, to do work for other companies. Yeah. And Santa, that's another problem that we found for Santa was that he is losing a lot of money to knockoffs and counterfeits and unlicensed sales. So every time you see that guy on the street corner selling Santa hats, you need to check if they're licensed. It's no different than when you're in New York City and you want to buy a Rolex and you actually buy a Rolex or something because they're unlicensed and you're taking money out of Santa's pocket. And then another problem that we came across, and this was, um, you know, in direct correlation with the downtime, you know, when Santa's away, the elves will play sexual harassment. He's had some issues there that, uh, amongst his staff that we've had to deal with. So there's some HR problems there and his hiring policies really aren't that great either. He's pretty um, archaic, let's say. He hasn't changed how he hires um, or trains and these millennial elves are way different than you know what he's been used to working with. Yeah. And Santa does not have an HR department, believe it or not, no HR department there. So we recommended that he reach out to our friend Ann Laguza from the Works Consulting to get some policies and, pr and procedures in place. And also maybe to talk to our good friend Rocco Coza at Coza Law, because I'm going to tell you, if two people can help solve some sexual harassment issues and get some policies in place, it's those two. One other thing is he's still continuing to lose elves to the dentistry business. Like there are people he, you know, when Herbie left and wanted to become a dentist, a lot of other elves wanted to follow suit. And kind of along the same lines there, the elves are a pretty unskilled labor force. They're great at putting together uh, wooden toy trains and all that, but who plays with those anymore? So he's been trying to figure out ways to train or outsource um, some of that work, because I mean, if you try to get an elf that's never done anything but build, you know, wooden toy trains to program a, a PlayStation, you're in trouble. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the bigger issues facing him is one that really it was going to take a global solution for. So this is where we need your help, listeners. Children don't believe anymore. They're really not believing in Santa and the magic of Christmas. And part of that is because they just know they can go order something on Amazon and get it tomorrow. So it would help Santa so much if we could all do a little bit more to restore the magic of Christmas, not only in kids, but in ourselves. Um, and another thing that we were talking with Santa about is uh, exit strategy and or relocation. I mean, he has been at this for hundreds of years and, you know, he's kind of getting tired. He's a little long in the tooth there. Um, also, when he set up shop in the North Pole, he didn't realize that it was just a giant floating iceberg and that there was no land underneath it. Um, so we were talking to him about possibly moving to the South Pole, uh, but we'll get into that because, you know, like it, it, whatever your thoughts are on global warming, Building your house on top of an iceberg is probably not a good idea. Not a good idea at all. You know what else isn't a good idea? <sighs> Having your star reindeer's wife cheat on you with another reindeer. That's right. You heard it. Rudolph's wife, Clarice, is cheating on him with Vixen. Of all the reindeer to cheat with, she picked Vixen. So Santa's got some issues with the animals in that they're not really working together very well right now. And he needs them to be ready on Christmas Eve to be pulling that sleigh. And lastly, uh, just like a very minor problem. Santa loves the carbs. He loves sugar. He loves milk. But he's been doing keto this year and also found out that he's lactose intolerant. So, um, that's just an issue right there. Yeah. Leave him almond milk this year, folks, or yeah. soy milk. Don't leave him dairy because he can't really drink it. And Santa doesn't like to waste. So just, you know, be, be conscious of that. Be mindful for Santa. So after we kind of went through all of the different problems that Santa was having, we started looking at different opportunities he had to improve upon his business. Um, the first one that did not seem as uh, obvious to Santa, but um, something where we think that would be beneficial both for both him and um, for his competition, Amazon, would be to partner with Amazon. Amazon is seen as this giant behemoth, heartless, soulless 
um, you know, uh, company and Santa is the exact opposite of that. So partnering with them, Santa can expand his distribution and Amazon can put, a, you know, paint a, a, a nice, bright, happy picture on their business. Yeah, because let's let's be honest, they are heartless and soulless. And so Santa can help them to raise their image, but also get toys to all the girls and boys much more efficiently, saving him some money. Um, and speaking of all the girls and boys out there, why not other religions? Yeah, you don't have to just be Christmas. I mean, you can you can everybody enjoys a good present. Everybody enjoys a free present. So that's true. And this was one of my favorite ones because, you know, Santa's always been there for, you know, some religions and others don't even really know that he exists or are probably wondering why as children Santa doesn't give them gifts when he gives them to other boys and girls and wondering if it's because they're not good. So this not only helps with increasing Santa's business, this helps to get children to believe more in the magic of Christmas. And once he starts expanding his business, we, you know, we started talking about the growth strategy. Um, he would definitely need to outsource some of the toy manufacturing. Uh, again, his elves are just, they're not, they're not capable of, of, today's technology. There's certain things they can do, but there's certain places where we can just repurpose what the elves are doing and outsource the actual manufacturing to uh, other businesses out there. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine if you are like a, you know, a Sony or a Nintendo or something, and you are able to put on your website that you partner with Santa Claus, what a marketing tool for other businesses that could go into that partnership. And like we already mentioned, a part of that growth strategy is uh, possibly relocating or putting, another, you know, building another warehouse somewhere else in the world that's uh, not on top of a floating iceberg um, and improving like on his just his warehousing and automation. And that's that's something that he's going to need to think about as he um, ramps his business back up. And and again, that that means that his elves are going to have to find some other work. But we we've got a solution for that. We do, and that is getting the elves additional training so that they can do some of the manufacturing themselves in-house, but also learn more skills and just add to the value that they they are they already have. Yeah, and that doesn't have to be just toy making. Nope. I mean, like they, it could be any kind of like manufacturing. He can send them off to school. They can get degrees in finance, and you know, Santa can have his own little finance firm, you know, whatever it is, it's all up to, you know, all up to Santa and what his elves are capable of. Completely. And, you know, along those same lines, he could get a really good training strategy developed if he brought in an HR consultant, like we already mentioned, right? Bring in an Ann Laguza or some other HR consultant to come in and help. And I think what's really important here is if whoever he gets as an HR consultant to come in and help, not only would they be helping him with policies and procedures to re reduce the amount of sexual harassment and really like bring up the, the hiring standards, but they could also help Santa with his leadership skills because a strong leader needs less HR. And who better to, you know, be a motivational speaker than Santa. I mean, who wouldn't love in the middle of July being, you know, somewhere in South Florida and Santa comes flying in to give you a motivational speech about, you know, sales or, or whatever it is, you know, just inspiring people. Yeah. And that really is another revenue stream for him, which is awesome because now he's being paid as a, as a um, speaker. And then finally getting some marriage counseling for Rudolph. I think we all know that Rudolph and Clarice belong together and, you know, we've seen that they've been together forever. She stuck by him when all the other reindeer were making fun of him on the playground. And so I think it's pretty important that they stay together just because they belong together, but they need some counseling. So we can bring that in house. Well, not only that, uh, from a PR standpoint, like Santa doesn't want that, that image of, you know, cheating reindeer and, and, yeah. You know, the, especially the HR issues that he's having with his the elven labor force. Um, so that's definitely something, you know, both the HR consultant and the marriage counselor is, is huge for his, his brand, his image. Yeah, that's a good point. That's good. He does not want that um, floating around out there that there's all of this, you know, reckless behavior happening. Next thing you know, we're going to hear that the elves are getting drunk while making toys. Yes. Um, yeah. 
Well, we know the Keebler elves are at least making cookies. Yeah, the Keebler elves are making cookies. We don't know what type of cookies, though. Do you? <laughs> yeah, not anymore. <laughs> we don't. But do you think that the Keebler elves is that a royalty issue that should be going back to Santa? Because I feel like he should be getting royalties on that. Yeah, no, he he's like they are a, a part. There is some some like a branch of his business. Oh yeah, they're a division. I yeah, didn't realize that. Oh yeah, I missed that when we were doing the audit. I did. Yeah. Um, anything that Santa could do in terms of like getting we didn't really talk about this with santa but maybe a bigger sleigh or hiring out other um like getting other santas like people that he could train to come in and help to deliver toys well that, that's part of like the whole royalty issue that he was running into is that there's imposter santas out there and he's not getting you know he's not get, getting his money that he should for all of these speaking engagements every time they show up at a mall or whatever it is um so he needs to definitely um, hire an attorney for all that. And, and that would also include all of the knockoff brands that are out there, all of the, you know, the, 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 just the, whatever the word I'm looking for right now, um, counterfeits, that's what I'm looking for. So the counterfeit items, the counterfeit Santas. Um, so hiring a good attorney and having, uh, that, that group of people who can deliver all those cease and desist letters and, mm. you know, everything that they, you know, they need so that Santa can get the money that he's, that he's deserved. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that we didn't talk about, but is, uh, very relevant this year. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of little boys and girls and probably parents too, and definitely grandparents who are very worried about Santa going to all of these houses in such a short period of time. And then like COVID is a, I mean, is Santa wearing a face mask this year? Or what's the story there? Well, we've already heard from Dr. Fauci that Santa has a, an immunity to COVID. So we're clear there. So no that's, worries on that. That's fantastic news. So nobody has to worry about getting COVID from Santa. No. Good, good, good. Um, the last recommendation we have for Santa though, and this is for all the non-believers, all, all the non-believers out there. So all the kids who are, you know, they believe more in Jeff Bezos than they do in Santa and all the parents who- Shame up on, on you it. kids. Um, we recommend that Santa stage a picture like getting caught delivering toys, kind of like the Loch Ness Monster or, or that Bigfoot, you know, like somebody is like a grainy photo of him doing something just to, you know, like drop that into the news so that everybody out there can, you know, he's just a little front and center again. Yeah, that's an absolute great idea is to have, you know, do a little bit of marketing to make sure that all the boys and girls, and especially those who are starting to not believe or don't believe that he exists because, you know, once you see Santa delivering toys to other people, you kind of become a believer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, Santa took us up on a lot of these and he is definitely looking into how to cut down on the knockoffs and the counterfeits and whatnot. And um, he's implementing some new strategies. We told him we would take a little bit of a break from working with him while he gets the Christmas season handled. And then we expect to be back up in the North pole in early January to do a debrief, see how it, things are going and then figure out how we can get Santa to partner with some of those companies like Amazon and the other big ones like Walmart. Thank you everybody for listening. And thanks to Santa for letting us uh, audit your business. Uh, everything that we talk about will be in the show notes. So go ahead and check those out. And you can connect with us on social media. You can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can reach us on sbpace.com and bizquickpodcast.com. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast, like us, and give us a review while you're out there. Yeah, you can reach out about topics that you're interested in hearing more about as well over on bizquickpodcast.com. And we wanted to let you know that we wrote a best-selling book. It's available on Amazon and it comes with a companion workbook. That's it for the podcast. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And this was BizQuick, helping small businesses across America and the North Pole. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.